Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Smart Minds, Good Times. Today, I have a very special guest, Janie. Say what's up. What's going on, man? How y'all doing? Not too bad. What about yourself, bro? Man, I'm good. I'm blessed, man. Yes, sir. How's your day going? Day's good, man. Just working, you know? Yes, sir. What you do for work? Man, I'm an artist, man. I just, I be working on this music. Yeah. Getting things together, you know? Is that what you do, like, in your free time? Like, you just work on music? 24-7. We working. 24-7, yeah. Yeah. I just I heard a new song, Anxiety come out. Yeah. I fuck with it. We were, we were bumping it in the on in the car on the way here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like I like that you do the R and B because a lot of people we've had on are rappers, so it's like a different type of music. Yeah, so I feel like with the R and B you can get vulnerable. You can really talk about your life and things you go through. Yeah. And then also, you know, I make songs for the ladies sometimes too. Yeah. So, yeah. That's always nice too. Yeah. A yeah, different yeah. audience too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wh- where are you from? Are you here from Richmond or Man, so I'm a Richmond transplant. Richmond kind of adopted me, but I'm from Virginia. I lived in Northern Virginia. I'm born in uh, Alexandria. Alexandria, lived okay. In, uh, was in D.C. area for a little bit. Uh, went to school in Hampton. Came down here for school. And then when I graduated school, I stayed down here. And the people out here just love me. They, they show love out here. So I, I just stayed, man. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little the same way. I grew up in, I, I was born in uh, Woodbridge area. Yeah. I lived out there. and um, I moved out here like maybe about to be six years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, would you like better, Richmond or Northern Virginia? Man, I got to say Richmond, man. I love D.C., mm-hmm. but outside of D.C., man, I love Richmond, man. The city show love. Yeah, you know, I, I like I like Richmond a lot better than North Virginia. Yeah. It's like, a, it's a smaller city, but it's like, a, it feels more like a, there's less movement going on. It's just a lot peaceful. I, I like that, like, there's like, you know, you move a little bit outside of Richmond, you got like Chesterfield, like a nice yeah. suburb area, you got the country, it's a little bit of everything. It's real homey here. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. So, um, you said you, what school did you go to out there? Um, so I graduated from Patriot High School. Now I ended up going to this military school called Fort Union. Man, I played football back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I ended up, I played at Hampton, uh, finished up at Virginia Union. So yeah, I played I played a little football, man. You say you went to college too, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I went to uh, Hampton University. Uh huh. Went to Virginia Union. Played defensive tackle. So yeah. you were on scholarship or something? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, I played. So my my first half of my life, I played football for. Yeah. I mean, I was always in the music though. Yeah, you know, came up. Um, my mom, you know, in church, my mom prays and worship leader. So I was, she had me on the mic when I was a kid, like six, seven years old. Oh, so you were singing in the mic? Yeah, so, like for the in like, uh, is it called mass? Is it, so it's it? just praise and worship. You know, just oh, okay. you know, so sometimes for some churches it's mass, but praise and worship. You know, I was singing as a kid in church. And that's like gospel. Right? Yeah, gospel. Yeah. So yeah. you got that. You already had that voice. I already room. had that yeah. since I was a kid. I, really and truly, I came out the womb with it because my mom was singer, uh, singer songwriter. Oh yeah, yeah. She used to, do, yeah. She used to do her thing. Oh hell yeah! So it yeah. runs in the blood, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely in the blood. So at, at, in college, uh, so you, it was a four year. Uh, four year, um, you know, just regular university. What What you major in? Man, I was a marketing major. Marketing manager. Yeah. Did you ever pursue like a career in marketing? Um, I was working in I was working in a marketing uh, firm right before COVID. Okay, okay. But then I started. I I didn't want to do that no more. How was COVID like for you? <sighs> Life changing like everybody else. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because I was in my last semester of school, so I had got that refund check because I was on scholarship, uh-huh. and I took that last check and I bought all my equipment. So I bought you know the mic, the audio interface, the the Yamahas, the, the whole nine. I bought everything, so yeah. I record myself. So do you, so you like mix and produce and engineer yourself too? I mean, for the most part, yeah. I oh, do a little shit. bit of everything. I do have, you know, I got my um, my main producers. Um, you know, King Sharif, Trust, um, my engineer, um, at Good Peoples. Okay. Yeah, so, you know. Do you know who Mao is? Mao, 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 Mao. Uh, yeah, 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 I've worked yeah. with Mao. I've worked oh, with Mao. Oh, you have worked with Mao? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Mao, yeah. he a cool guy. Yeah, when he, he came on here, he was telling me, like, when artists, uh, he pushes all artists to, like, know how to produce, know how to engineer. Oh, yeah. That way they're not just the artists. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how long did it take you to really pick up, like, the... Not just the artist wise, but like the behind the scenes. Uh, like a good year. I, good year. I bought all my equipment, uh, 2020, and then I put out my first song. I think 20, like at the end of 2020, 2021. Okay, so yeah, so your first song was okay about 2021. Yeah. yeah. What, what was your first song called? Fifty man. It's a rap song. It's a rap song. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was. I was just straight rapping, straight bars. So did you at that time? Did you want to be like a rapper, or but you always had like the R and B. I mean, I wanted to do both, but I kind of wanted. I just came out with the rap song first. Okay. Yeah. How long did you do rap before you switched to R and B? Um, well, I, mean, I I do a little bit of both. I mean, I do both, but um, 
Man, I was rapping since I was a kid. I was shoot. I used to rap in middle school. Oh yeah. I got a, I got a song out from like when I was in high school on YouTube. Oh yeah. I ain't gonna tell people. But I'm I'm gonna make them search for it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's I wasn't that good though. But I, I've been rapping for a while. Was the quality on it that good or? Nah, we was, no. it was US, USB mic. Oh okay, okay. <laughs> like, like the little Yetis or something. Yeah, yeah oh, okay, even yeah. worse than that. <laughs> it wasn't even as good as that. So. So you, your boys at school, would y'all like uh, get in, get on the lunch table, start like spitting bars, yeah, and knock the table yeah. and stuff? Man, it's crazy. So we had this one guy. We had this one guy. He had the whole setup at his house. Yeah. So we used to go to his house because I think his dad used to do music. So we used to go to his house and just record on um, like Drake instrumentals, Lil Wayne instrumentals. You know how it used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. back yeah. in the days like that. Um, it's like you know, it's like. It's like that's kind of how we pick up like the little freestyle skills, like yeah. get in the car, play a beat, get with your homies, yeah. you know, get smacked, and then like yeah. freestyle. That's how it goes, though. That's how it goes. So like, but like, what really made you want to pursue music like as a career? Man, so I used to work in college. I was working uh, security. I was doing security in the clubs. Uh huh. I was doing uh, something in the water. I did security down there. Okay. So it was one night. Uh, rest in peace, PNB Rock. I was doing uh, the one at Main Stage. I did that concert. I did security there. And um, he was singing. And, you know, I love PNB Rock, but the auto-tune went out on the mic. And I heard him, and I was like, wait, hold up. His voice wasn't good. It, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it okay. was just like, I just know what I could do. Yeah. So I was like, hold up, I could do this. Hey, and just then I keep, like, I did a security for Roddy Rich, Meg Thee Stallion, and as I keep seeing these big artists, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 doing security and they walking out with a big bag to do something I know I could do. I said, hold on now. Hey, just because they're bigger don't mean they're better. Right, and, right, right. You know, just uh fame doesn't equal the talent, but like nowadays right. the industry pushes like uh like the image, like an image. Like they right. want like the the sex symbol to push out sexy red, ice spice, right. stuff like that. But it's like I now I feel like the music industry kind of shifted to not really talent. It's more just like um what influences people the most. Man, it, it depends. It's it's what sells. It's always yeah. been like that. I just, I think back in the day, maybe what sold, you know, had more talent to it. Uh huh. I mean, there's definitely still some very talented acts that are. Oh yeah. Selling well, you know, we still got the Drakes, we still got the Kendricks, so you know, what I'm saying we we still got that. What was it like working security out in those events? Oh man, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, I did a I did an event. Um, I did security for Boosie. Oh yeah. Girls were throwing their bras and panties on stage. I got hit with a bra. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. It was definitely wild. Definitely wild. Were, were people ever trying to like uh you know like not exactly fight you but like trying to get through you and stuff nah, like that? No, they weren't trying to fight me. Yeah. They was just, some of the other security guys, yeah, they weren't really trying to fight me. So. How, how often do you see girls show titties out there? Every night, <laughs> every night, trying to get in the club, get in concerts, you know. Yeah. Hey, shit, that's a personal job, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! You know, it's like oh, uh, out there, is it like a different like uh vibe, like um, like as like uh like dealing with people and everything because they like they everybody comes in like drunk or drugs. Do you have to learn how to like work with them or man, you you get to really learn how people really are because I really do believe that sometimes you know drunk words are sober thoughts. Yeah. So you get to see how people really are, their true intentions, how they really feel, what they really would do. So it's it's interesting more than anything. Yeah, you know that that's true about the so uh, sober thoughts or no drunk, drunk words, thoughts. sober thoughts. Yeah, because like yeah. I, I that after like a certain couple situations that happened to me, yeah. I'm like, damn, that's really how I felt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. What, that's what, what's like a crazy drunk story you got? Man, uh, you mean like working security? Oh, uh, or like a drunk story? Yeah. Oh man. Oh, this is bad. I'm gonna tell y'all though. Oh man, I don't even want to tell y'all, but I'm gonna tell y'all. <laughs> so, man, I was, I was in my feelings, man. I. So if you listen to the song "Anxiety," you yeah. gonna, you gonna hear when I said, uh, "I had a dream that you found a new." <laughs> yeah. So I had a, I was drinking, uh -huh. and then I went to sleep. <laughs> oh shit! And so I was thinking, I was like, hold oh, up. What's going on? Is she is she out? Is she doing something? Mm -hmm. And at the time, you know how it is when you break up with somebody, but y'all back and forth. Y'all not really done dealing with each other types. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened. I got in the car, and uh, I pulled up to her crib, and she oh, wasn't shit. and she wasn't there. So I'm blowing up her phone. She ain't picking up the phone. And then if you listen to the song, you hear what happened. But pretty much, I found out she was preoccupied with something else. Oh. And then I was still drinking in the car, and I, I remember pulling up to Wawa, 
with a bottle of, you know, with a bottle of, I don't even know what I drink, but yeah. with a bottle of something, the next thing I know, I wake up, and it's the morning time. At the Wawa. At the Wawa. Jesus the, Christ. And, um, you know, when you pull up to the gas, yeah, yeah, gas yeah. pump, I'm at the pump with it. Damn. Yeah. And it's crazy because police was across the street, or not even across the street, but, like, across the way, and my bottle just in the uh, in the driver's and not in the driver's seat, but in the passenger seat. Oh, shit. Somebody could have pulled up. I'm like, dang. And that and that still counts as a DUI. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I could have been. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I had, I feel you on that. I had a story like that not too long ago where I was, I could have been fucked. Um, I'm not really supposed to say on camera. Uh, mom, you're watching this. I, I I'm gonna say it. <laughs> it's like uh, I think it was like three weeks ago. I crashed yeah. my car. Right. I was coming from a club, but I was drunk. You know and. Yeah. Uh, and I, but I was coming down the highway off of Po White. Yeah. I hit a deer. A deer comes across the street. Oh. And it's like, and it's like, you know, that wasn't my fault. Right, right, right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if a cop, and I pull over to the side, if a cop comes, you know, they're going to ask, oh, what happened? They'll be like, hey, have you been drinking tonight? Right. Even though the accident wasn't my fault, they're right. still going to hit me with a DUI. So it's right. like, that's one thing I'm not going to do again anytime soon. <sighs> yeah, I learned my lesson. I did too. Yeah. My car's total. <laughs> But yeah, man. You know who who what artists inspire you the most? Man, thing about it is I'm such a music head. So growing up, I was big on on Ye, Kanye. Yeah, um, Kanye was my guy. Well, really, it started off with Fifty Cent. That's when it really uh, Get Rich or Die Trying is what really kicked it off. Yeah, that's a classic. Then you know it was Kanye. You know, Lil Wayne had it for a while, but then when I heard Drake. Uh, it that changed everything. I remember the first time I heard "Best uh, Best I Ever Had." I yeah. was like, "Dang!" So you could rap and sing, you could do that. Yeah. And so once I realized you could do that, it just it changed everything for me. And that's when I started like really getting crazy with the. I used to write music. I mean, I've been writing music for other people for years. Oh yeah, even in co- high school, college, other artists, I'm writing songs for them and stuff like that. Like, what do you, What do you think makes you good at writing songs? Um. So my mom used to write songs, and um, she just tell, she would always tell me, "You just wanna you wanna make biggest the most important thing is you want people to walk away with they, you want to make them feel something." Yeah, you know whether it's um, whether it's joy, whether it's pain, um, you just, you want them to feel how you how you feel. And so if you can really get that point across, it doesn't have to be the most lyrical thing in the world, um, but if they can if they get that feeling. And you did your job, so. Yeah, it's like something that they can relate to. Yeah. So, it's like, another, I remember one thing that I think Lil Baby said. Um, it's like, if it if if it can be a good Instagram caption, yeah, it's a hit or something like it's that. It's a hit. Yeah. It's a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, then they will be like, okay, shit, Janie said this. Let me put it on my Instagram uh, right. caption or something like that. Right, 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 um, right. But, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, that's kind of what you have to do as an artist. You got to be able to, because uh, it's not just influence. It's being able to, like, kind of relate to them. Because, in mm-hmm. reality, you got you as an artist are kind of painting a picture or like a world through that song. Mm-hmm. You're saying like in the song Anxiety, you're saying like, you know, you're going through a heartbreak. Or, or, yeah, or like a situation like that. Yeah. Like I found out she's basically cheating and somebody yeah. else might be going through that and they'll be like, oh shit, I like this song. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, what you, you mentioned a couple of producers that you worked with and yeah. how you produce your own songs. What do you think was like the hard, what do you think has been the hardest part uh, like behind the scenes to mm-hmm. you so far, like dealing with music? Hardest thing behind the scenes, and I'm still working on it, is probably the engineering side. Engineering side? The engineering side, understanding. First of all, I had, so, back to when I was talking about how I bought all that equipment, uh-huh. first two months I couldn't do nothing. Like, I could record myself, but it didn't sound good. It sounded trash. I didn't know how to do anything. I had to really get on YouTube. I had to really call um, a lot of engineer friends. Uh, shoot, shout out to Swami. Oh, I know Swami. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Swami. Uh-huh. He helped me out a lot. Um, Mao, I used to hit up Mao. Um, a lot of guys that used to work at Defiant. Um, it's There's so many engineers on Instagram. I mean, I even hit up one of Young Thug, uh, Free Young Thug, one of Young Thug's engineers, and he would, like, give me little tips and stuff. Oh, yeah? So, I mean, I'll... I'm not afraid to just DM somebody if I like their work uh-huh. or if I, you know, aspire to do something that they're doing or if I notice that there's a level that they're on that I'm maybe not on at the moment, yeah. but I, I want to get there to uh, to reach out for knowledge. And so that getting my vocals crispy, um, EQ and st- certain stuff like that is just because I always want the vocals to be 
right because I'm a I'm a singer by trade. I'm an R and B guy. Yeah. Even though I do the rap, I mean, I really I'm big on melody. You know, they they call me the melody king. I'm like, all right, cool, let's go with that. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's my thing. So and it's like one thing maybe I should have asked Mal because he is a producer. But like, I'll ask you. You might know. It's like when artists use auto tune, mm -hmm. do they have like they're already like pre saved settings to so they could keep the same voice and keep it consistent, or do you think they like switch it around? Um, it definitely depends per song. Okay. Um, and a lot of people think when you have auto tune. That just means that like you can't sing. You got to be able to carry a note to even use it to begin with. So that's sure. let's let's dispel that myth right now. You got to You can't just get on there and have no voice and think you're gonna sound sweet. No, it yeah. don't work like that. Um, and you kind of have to have some type of music theory understanding. You have to be able to know how to set uh, auto tune to the key of the beat. I'm giving out a little bit of gems right now. You got to be able to know how to set the um, your auto tune to the key of the beat. I mean, there's just certain things you have to know. Um, in order for it to to work the way you want it to work, yeah. a lot of people don't know that. They think they can just throw on auto tune and boom, it's gonna work. It don't work like that. Yeah, at, at least that's how I would see it. Like they no. have an artist who's auto tune, but it's like really, I know there's a lot more that goes behind the scenes. Because if the beat is in the key of G, you have to set your auto tune to the key of G. Uh -huh. You have to. It's this thing called humanize, retune speed. I mean, it's just so much stuff. You gotta you gotta really know what you're doing. Is it like learning a whole new language? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, it's like learning Spanish and you've never been. You've never been around nobody who speaks Spanish. Yeah. yeah. And you That's know, how, it is. how long do you think it'll take you to like really kind of um, feel comfortable like and maybe call yourself like not exactly an expert, but like know what you're doing in the engineering side of things? Um, hmm. Do you come with practice or watching YouTube videos? It really depends on how, how much you're willing to grind at it. I mean, there were days, especially during COVID, I mean, uh -huh. there was days where I'd wake up, get on the, uh, get on Pro Tools, I'd look out the window, it's light, you know, it's daytime. By the time I'm done for the day, it's nighttime. I'm talking 12-hour days just working on my craft. So, I mean, it, it really depends on how bad you want it and what you want to do and how much time you want to put in. That's true, and that's something yeah. you got to do. You got to put in those hours in. I forgot, yeah. uh, there was like a saying that you got to put in, I'm not sure, I think it was 10,000 hours. 10,000. Mal so, Malcolm Gladwell, if you ever read the book, and this is a great book, uh, it's called Outliers. Uh-huh. Um, it, it talks about the masters, uh, people who've mastered things like Beethoven, uh, Michael Jordan, and like um, Einstein. The the kind of consensus is that um, the the hours of mastery is ten thousand hours. Once you've hit that ten thousand hours, then you're considered like you know like a, a master of your craft. Yeah, ten thousand hours. What is that? That's like uh, that, that's uh, twenty. So divided by twenty four, probably. Uh, that's like five hundred days, right? <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> I'm I think it it's a little bit over 500 days. How long? Let's see. 10,000 divided by 24. 416 days. Yeah. So if you grind for a year and a half. That's without sleeping, though. <laughs> that's without sleeping. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it probably. I'm just now probably becoming a master. And I started at, what, 2020? 2020. It's about to be 2024. You know, yeah. I, I forgot to ask you earlier, but how old are you? Man, I just, uh, I'm about to turn 29 in uh, end of January. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any kids? Nah, man. No kids? Yeah, no kids, man. Uh, you know, like one thing uh, in the, you told me like you want to talk a little bit about like uh, relationships, how you're talking about, you're pushing out the song Anxiety right now. Man, yeah, so Anxiety essentially, I mean, I was in a little to <laughs> toxic relationship, man. Uh -huh. a toxic relationship. I consistently arguing, stuff like that. It was crazy. Um, yeah, pretty much. And that's kind of what I'm talking about in the song, too. Uh -huh. But in the project, um, I'm actually working on the project. It's an EP. I got enough songs for it to be an album, but I don't, wanna, I don't think I want to drop a whole album. But the EP called Therapy. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't really know, I didn't know that... Um, when you're in a toxic relationship, you need to recover afterwards. Yeah. I'm thinking because I'm, you know, like when you're young, you jump from relationship to relationship. You can jump from girl to girl. But when you, like, really invest your whole heart, your, all your time and your energy into something, and it's just killing you, yeah. it can be crazy. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand when they talk about uh, protecting your peace and um, when they're talking about all that kind of, like, energy and all that. And, and, and really just protecting your energy. I didn't really understand the magnitude of it until I had to deal with it. And it can 
it can get to the point where you you working on a project or you working on your grind, working on your craft, and you're dealing with somebody who maybe is just toxic or or just um, maybe just is an energy leech. They can make you not even want to do anything. You know, I believe everything happens for a reason. Do you think if you didn't, weren't in that toxic uh, situation, relationship, you wouldn't have made the song Anxiety? Nope. And l- let's just say, right? Would have never made it. Let's just say, right, that toxic relationship didn't end. That song would never came out. What if this song is the one that really gets your name out there? Right. And it, I f- I'm gonna be honest. That song, yeah, has potential to be like a hit. I know. I'm not saying I know. like right. I thank you for that. I'm man. not saying it'll go straight to billboards, but I'm right. saying it it will it could be, definitely be a song that could get your name out there. Right. So like I I always see it like that things mm-hmm. happen for a reason. Uh, last time I told this to somebody, his name was Nestor. He was an 18 year old kid mm-hmm. that makes reggaeton music, Spanish music. Right. And so what he told me is the day before he came on here. Uh, he was trying to perform at his school, mm-hmm. and the, uh, one of the teachers fucked him over and put in a bad word for him, and didn't let him perform at the school. Next day, he comes on here and tells me that story, and I was like, "Look, bro, I believe everything has a reason. Maybe that wasn't for you. Right. What if um, this right here is the opportunity that leads you to this and that?" And I knew a DJ. His name's DJ Angelo, yeah. and I hooked him up with him. Uh, next week, he perform. He gets his song played at the club. The week after that, oh, wow. he opens up for a big Hispanic artist at the club, and that was his first time performing. Wow. So, you know, instead of him performing for the first time at school, he performed there. So it was like, you know, same situation could be like that for you. It was like, that, if that situation didn't happen, that song would not have came out. So it's destiny, you know? God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistakes. Hell yeah. Question time. Let's see. Question time. Pick and choose whatever you want. All right, I'm going to grab the blue one. Could you survive without a phone for six mo- months for a hundred k? Could you? Ah, a hundred k. Damn. Six months, a hundred k. That's what. Yeah. No phone. No, no phone calls. No message to. No nobody. phone calls. No nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> nah. Just because. Just because, like, I got. I got special circumstances, man. I got family, so I got so my I got family overseas. Okay. So I got I got you know I got family in Ghana. My my pops are from Ghana. Shout out to Ghana. Um, my pops from Ghana, so I got family overseas, and then I got cousins that live all the way across the country and stuff like that. I couldn't do it. Plus, yeah. I got Facetime my mom. Yeah. Yeah, nah, I couldn't do it. Hey, but they'd be like, "Hey, mom, it's cool. I'll give you like twenty k after this." <laughs> I look. I bet on myself. I'll try to make. I'll try to make 200K in six months. Hell yeah. With, with the phone. With the phone. With yeah, the phone. Yeah, 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 that's true. I don't know. If I had to. <sighs> six months is a long time, though. Six months. Yeah. How you going to do all your, your music promo? That's true. You can't yeah, do yeah. no music promo without uh, the phone nowadays. That's true, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can, but. You can, but you can't. You nah. Know? Yeah. Instagram, TikTok, six months. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. You got to know what's going on with the world, too. You got to. You yeah. got to. You know, have you been to Ghana yourself? Man, I got to go. I was supposed to go out. No, I haven't. I was supposed to go COVID here. I was supposed to go. Okay. So, like, uh, did your parents move out there or? So, my dad, he's from there. He he moved here uh, in the 80s. Okay. My mom's American, but my dad's from there. Okay. And do they both live out there now? No, they they live here. They both live here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But I got, like, like uncles, uh, cousins, aunties, like, relatives, like, because none of my dad's side of family except for, like, a couple, um, like my aunt, one of my aunts and my uncles and stuff like that. But for the most part, like a majority, like a huge part of my family still lives there. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hey, shit. Yeah, I mean, hey. Yeah. Respect, though. I probably would have taken the 100K. <laughs> you would take the 100K? I think so. I think, I think like, I I'll take a break for the podcast six months, come back with the 100K and, like, come back with, like, a big-ass guest or something. I'll make 100K in six months, though, with the yeah. phone, though. Yeah. Hey, shit. So I'm like, shoot, it's all good. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, Earlier, I was gonna bring a little uh, some questions about relationship wise, right? Yeah. So, where do you think you'll find your wife? You said when or where? Where? Dang. At the strip club. <laughs> man, uh, uh, man, I don't know. I feel like, man, I'm gonna meet her somewhere I don't expect, man. Like, like I feel like I'm gonna meet her somewhere wholesome, like the grocery store somewhere. I ain't gonna say somewhere lame, but like. Cause I, you know what I'm saying? When you was a, when you was a, when I was a young and I used to, you know, meet girls at the club, uh-huh. um, shoot, meet girls on Instagram and all that. All bad. Never works for me. Um, I think, I don't know. I'm a, I might, I don't know where I'm gonna meet a girl. Like my, my wife. 
Maybe a church. I don't know. Shit, that's, I think that's what we all hope of. Uh, maybe a church. But I mean, I have bad experience with that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Hey, I'm not gonna. I, it's, it's the church girls that got the devil in them. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> nah, not all of them. Not all of them. But, but nah, like, I don't know where I'm gonna meet her at, dog. But I'm just, I'm just like, man, God gonna bring her to me at this point. I'm gonna yeah. meet her. I'm gonna meet her somewhere. Shoot, maybe, hopefully, uh, hopefully. Yo, if, I, if my wife was a producer. Oh, uh, let's get that back Woo, together. That, that, that'll make life easy. Yeah. Or if she was a singer or something. I don't know. Yo, imagine y'all become like a couple, like, you know, like a duo or something. Like an artist. Like, y'all got your duo. Y'all could be called. Like, y'all gave yourselves a name and y'all push out music like that. It would have, like, she could do, like, the the chorus and you put in, like, the verse. You know like what? That. I know where I'm going to meet my wife. Oh, where's that? Wherever Chloe Bailey's at. Chloe Bailey. <laughs> Wherever she's at, I'm gonna meet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna meet. I'm gonna meet Chloe Bailey, man. I'm gonna shoot my shot. You know who Becky G is? Nah. Nah, you don't know Becky G? Nah, who's Becky G? That, that's like my type. She's a Latina artist. I got you. Got to show me Becky G. I'll show you. I'll show you, you Becky G. Show me Becky G. She's like she's she's like uh she's like an OG in the Latino world. Man, so you remember how? Remember how? Um, what's his name? Uh, Yo, God, he said he was gonna. He was going to get Angela Simmons. Angela Simmons? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, actually, no, I'm not sure about yeah, that. He said he said it years ago he was going to get, oh, Becky G. Yeah, Becky G. What's up with Becky G? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she giving Chloe Bailey a run for the money. Shit, I don't know. That's just, that's just like, I think that's probably my go-to right there. Or, like, like, or we, like Ariana Grande. I like Ariana, but we like Becky G. Yeah, now. oh yeah, Becky G. We like Becky yeah. G. <laughs> we like Becky G. I'm a Becky G. I'm gonna have to listen to her music now. Yeah, I, yeah. Yo, I don't even listen to her music. I just, <laughs> I, I just like her for who she is. I'm gonna have to rock with Becky G now. You know, so I'm guessing Chloe Bailey is like your celebrity crush. But like, if you had like a celebrity crush or anything, <laughs> would it be Chloe Bailey or someone else? Chloe. Ooh, nah. I mean, yeah, Chloe Bailey or Coco Jones. Coco, I don't know who that is. You don't know Coco Jones. Uh. I love Coco Jones, and then hold on. That sounds like an old lady name. Nah, Coco, she ain't no, she ain't no old lady. <laughs> Coco <laughs> Jones. Uh, uh, wait, hold. Chloe Bailey, Coco Jones. Everybody know I love SZA. SZA, oh, okay, nah, I, I mean, love SZA. SZA, yeah. We love SZA. SZA, Summer Walker look crazy. I like SZA though. What about Rihanna? You, you like Rihanna? She or her cool, forehead a little too big. Nah, Rihanna cool, but she with my man ASAP. Yeah. We love SZA though. And you know, like a lot of people feel some type of way about Rihanna's forehead. Me personally, I don't care. I ain't mad at her yeah. forehead. Shoot. I'll be like, mm. her forehead, good luck. <laughs> All that money. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, man. I, when I brought uh, Chop on, I asked him that question. He said, Oprah. Oprah? Yeah. I'm with him. Yeah, he with Oprah. Oprah. She a billionaire. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She my crush too. He was like, I'm going to give him, like, mm. <laughs> he was like, and then he was like, "Shit, I'm gonna, I'm convinced her like we should do this again." Yeah, nah, I look. This is what I do with Oprah. Nah, I ain't gonna do that with Oprah. I'm be like, Oprah, look. If I get with Oprah, we gotta have it. We gotta bring one in too, though. You know, because Oprah might get tired. <laughs> she might not want to rumble with me every day. Oprah might not want to rumble with me every oh, day. I'm man. like, look, Oprah, get you a little tag team partner. Yeah. Ah, I was like, let me quit oh. playing. <laughs> oh, shit. Question oh, time again. Question Let's time, see. Question time. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, worst date you went on. Oh, this going to be oh. funny. And that fits a topic, too. I ruined the date. I think I ruined the date. I'm a, I'm convinced. Okay. I'm gonna tell y'all what I did. So I'm a big kid at heart. I love to play. I'm goofy for real. Like I don't I don't take life too serious. I like to have fun. Yeah. So I took this girl on a date. I took her to the hibachi spot, right? Okay. I took her to the hibachi spot, and um, you know when you go to the hibachi spot, well, first of all, she was like, um, she thought it was weird. I ain't had no gun in the car. She was like, you ain't got no strap? I was like, nah. She was like, oh. <laughs> she, was, she was like, she was like, oh. At that point, she was like, this is not it. I was like, oh, damn. She yeah. Did. She, all right, all right. So, so then we go to the hibachi spot. And um, you know how the chef, they be throwing the shrimp. Yeah. They be throwing the shrimp in uh -huh. the... So, and we like, the where we sitting is like a, a bunch of families around us. You know, it's like a family yeah. hibachi spot. I forgot where it was, but we went there. 
That's where she wanted to go. So the chef throws the uh, the chef throws the shrimp and the beef, yeah. and I catch it. I'm I catch it with my yeah. just like every, but everybody doing it. Uh huh. So I could t I don't know like I could tell she had like an attitude about that. I didn't know it was about that. Oh, but I, but she had like a little two the whole night. Like she was just being real standoffish. Like she wasn't like she was she was bad as hell. Oh, she was bad. Oh, she was bad. But she wasn't fun. I don't. You could be bad as hell, but if you're not fun, I can't rock with you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. so she told me at the end of the date, like I can't rock with a man who who gonna allow another man to throw shrimp in his mouth. <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn. I thought we was having fun though. Yeah, nah, fuck that. <laughs> she wa she wanted one of those nonchalant. Yeah, she thugs. wanted me to be. She wanted me to be uh, uh, super super thug. Yeah, I like uh, that. I'm sorry, baby. I like to have fun. That, that's when you got to split the bill. Nah, <laughs> I paid, man. That, it was a grip too. Ah shit. Shoot, cause you know they put the gratuity on there. Oh, like the extra eighteen percent. They throw that joint on the yeah. twenty something percent. Yeah. I'm like, dang, we still in the we still in Richmond. This ain't New York. <laughs> but it's all good. Did though. you ever see her again after that? Man, I ain't talked to her ever again. Damn. I ain't talked to her. Nah, she commented, she not commented, but she replied to one of my um to one of my stories when I posted this song. One of my songs got like like a hundred thousand views on, on IG. And then she want to try to talk to me. She tried to be slick. I'm like, nah, nah. baby. Trying to finesse me like that. Be like, nah. be like, uh, I'm not, I'm not a thug neither. Right yeah, now. you know <laughs> what I'm saying. It's all good though. Oh my god, we you got know. somebody for you. That's true. You yeah. know, we got somebody in Richmond for you. They, they, they rock you. Go <laughs> with them. Go with one of the, go so, with one of the shooters. Yeah, they got. Go find you a shooter. They definitely got a strap I'm in a the lover, car. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! You know what I'm saying, so. Oh, you know, you know, like, what do you think about the Richmond music scene right now? Man, the music, the Richmond music scene is crazy. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, you got you got Chop, he's fire. You got uh, you got Kai, he's fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got Porterville, you got uh, Fresh Porter, he's fire. You got my girl Mia Money, she Hell go yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, you got who else? You got Lil Ray. Lil Ray, she's tough. Yeah, she, she's like the only female. Her and Mia Money are the only female artists in the city that I listen to because, like, I don't yeah. feel embarrassed. I, I Cause they hard. Yeah, I could be like in the traffic, windows down, bumping right. Lil Ray and Mia Money, and right. I won't look like a girl or nothing. Right. I, I can't be caught listening to no sexy rap though. <laughs> <laughs> nah, what's it called? I know me and uh, me and Mia. We gonna we gonna link because we've been. In, I've been talking to her. We about to drop a song. We are gonna make a song. Together. Oh, that's gonna be fire. Yeah, we gonna drop it. We gonna make a song, and then um. But the one thing I know about the Richmond music scene is that we just, right now, you know, ain't nobody to ain't nobody to sing on none of these hooks. Yeah, ain't nobody. And I was that's why I was like, man, look, remember back when Drake, Drake and T Pain, they was getting on the hooks, they was killing it. Uh huh. I said, look, that's when I'm gonna be in the city. You gotta be, the, yeah, you gonna be. The that's Drake when in the I'm city. gonna be. The, I'm yeah. gonna be the Drake. <laughs> Let me get on your hook. Oh, shout out to my boy, um, Rocky, Rocky yeah. Corleone. So many people, man. Hey, G Sambo. Sam Sambo. You know Sambo it's crazy. Bar. I met Sambo when I was playing ball in Union. Oh yeah. And he performed at our homecoming. Oh, he told me about that. Yeah, he performed at our homecoming. I was like, dang, this it's fire. I, I told him I was I was gonna get into music. He said, go for it. So he inspires me too, man. That's that's he's a real one. You know, I'm telling you, like you could, like you said, you there's no one really like singing the choruses. I you, know. You could definitely be it. You got the voice for I it know. too. I know. So like, it, it, so that's what it's gonna be. You are gonna be the man for the for the chorus for the features and for stuff. The everything. Yeah. Everything. You know, but, have you performed here in the city before? Man, a couple times, not a whole lot though. Were you nervous performing for the first time? Nah, not really. I mean, I, I automatically like. I get a little butterflies, but once the music turns on, it goes away. You think it's harder to uh. Because somebody told me that it's hard to get into venues as an artist here in Richmond if you're not, like, a rapper. Do you think it's hard for you? Uh, it would be a little harder since you make R&B music? Or? I mean, uh, it could be, but the thing about it is it's like, even though I'm r and B, I I still got songs that are that are rap. Like, it's like melodic rap. So it's like I got the R&B, R&B songs, and then I got, like, the singing rap Melodic R and B song. I mean, the melodic rap songs, and then I actually have some rap songs too, some trap songs too. So yeah. it's like, I mean, and you could also do like a. Have you done like a song where it's like you'll do like 
the chorus, like in the singing voice, and then put yeah, and then put it going with bars. I I got something like that that I'm about yeah. to, I'm about to drop, and then the crazy thing about it is, man, you know, like I love like don't get me wrong, I love Richmond, but it's so much bigger for me because like, um, I was talking to my mom one day, and she was like, you know, because you know I got an African background, my yeah. dad's from Ghana, and um, this is before like. It started going crazy with the Afro beats, but she was like, "You need to start making African music, Afro beats, and stuff like that." And I'm a piano and all that. So, and then next thing I know, I see Gunna on the on the Afro beats. I like, what in the world? You know what's? I remember. I know that song, but who was it with? It was with. Uh, was it? I with? forgot who it was with, but it was fire. Uh huh. And so that's when I, I'm. I mean, I got Afro beat songs too. Yeah. So I'm really, I'm trying to <laughs> global. What What do you plan on uh, putting that album out? That EP. Man, the EP probably gonna drop um around my birthday, January thirtieth. Okay, around so that time, late next month then. Yeah, late next month. Oh yeah, you know yeah. it's like, do you when are you at the point yet where do you do like the um when you put out a song and mm-hmm. if you got a feature or somebody or like producers, do you have to do the whole um like the publishing and behind the scenes? Legal oh work? yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a pain? is that a pain? It's not a pain yet. Okay, I know I know at some point what. The bigger the bigger you get, the higher you climb. It's going, it can get like that, but oh. not for me, not right now. You have a lawyer that you work with right now. I do have an entertainment lawyer. I ju- actually just got one. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like uh, Mal when he was on here. He was, I got to put that video out tomorrow. That's a good one to watch. He explains yeah. a lot about that and like different things about like the uh, music business side of things. It's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. I, <laughs> Even though I'm just getting started, I've already had, you know, you'll have situations where maybe you write the song and a producer sent you a beat and then you you, you agree on a split uh-huh. and then next thing you know, they want to change it and then it's like, well, we already signed for this or we, we already, you know, yeah. established this agreement and then people threaten to sue. But at my level, at my level, they ain't really suing like that, but. But like, as you go, it, it'll. It's going to, ha- yeah. It, I'm not saying it will, but it. They'll probably try. I'm like this, though, because I sample a lot. Yeah. I sample a lot, and I told my producers, look, I know, like, people say, oh, don't sample, you'll get sued. I'm like, look, if we get sued, we did our job. The song blew up. Hey, that's true. <laughs> Dude, look, if we get sued, hey, look, I'm shooting. You know, you might not get the money from it. They might cover the money, but you we, got that exposure. We going to get something. Yeah. We going to get something. So, honestly, I'm just, I'm to the point where I'm just like, I don't got no, no fear. I ain't scared of nothing. I'm just... Full throttle, I'm shooting my shot, I'm gone. I'm like Steph. You know, that's like, that's oh, when Rocky came on here, he told me that he had sampled the song, the Party Girl song, mm-hmm. with a sample from, uh, I believe it was from, I forget his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he passed away now, but, um, right. and at that time, like the, when that song blew up, labels were coming for him, they was trying to like, it was, they couldn't, he couldn't monetize the song at the time, but like mm-hmm. he got with the labels and stuff and they managed to like get it monetized. Yeah. But it's like, um, it, yeah, those samples, like, a lot yeah. of artists using, but it's like, I, you know who just did one not too long ago? Um, That they're trying to come, I think Rod Wave. Bo- and Bo- oh, did you hear about that? Rod Wave, Boosie? Man. And Boosie won, yeah. like, uh, 200K or something. Man, Boosie got to chill, man. Chill on my boy Rod Wave, man. Shout out to Rod Wave. Man. Yeah, you like Rod Wave? Man, I, I love Rod Wave, but it get on my nerve because, man, I was just out of D.C. Uh-huh. And the girl was like, oh, it's Rod Wave. <laughs> I'm like, oh, chill out with all that. You know, all the all the blogs. The first thing they'll do is, oh, is he the is he the Virginia Raw Wave? Yeah, is he the next Raw Wave? I'm like, nah, I'm the first JD. Hey, yeah, I, but I but I I do love Raw Wave's music. It definitely inspired me. I was listening to him before he blew up. A lot of my friends from Florida put me on to him. So naturally, like you know, what I'm saying any any another fly, uh, big boy fly big dude just like me. So obviously, I'm a love him. But it's just like sometimes I'll be like, all right, y'all ain't gotta call me Rod. Wave, but you know, that may be a good thing that they associate. Like they make the association because Rod Wave fans might, since let's just say it's kind of like similar music. Yeah. Um, they might be like, okay, damn, like so. He, oh no, they they definitely look, flock to my page though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely like people that like Rod Wave or like. I think I'm on, uh, it was like Raw raw Wave, Young Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raw yeah. Wave, Young Blue. Uh, I even had like some Tory Lanez fans coming, oh, yeah. to, my, coming to my page. Um, it was somebody else too. But those are Derez Deshaun, like people like that. You know, do you do a lot of like the boosting the posts on Instagram? I do occasionally. Uh-huh. It be working sometimes. Well, what like audience you try to target? Like, uh... I be trying to target, so it's crazy. It used to be just the South that rock with me. 
okay. like the South, like Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, obviously Virginia, the Carolinas. But lately, I've been having people everywhere. I mean, if I go, if I go on my Apple Music right now, Yo, David, is that my water? Oh, let me see. It's it's starting to. It's starting to get global, honestly. So if I look at it, I mean, I got listeners in the U.S., obviously, but Switzerland, the U.K., Canada, Sierra Leone, Fiji, Japan, Nigeria, India, Korea, Brazil. Like, it's starting to, it's starting to spread. And then even in the U.S., I mean, my my top cities is Richmond, New York, Baltimore, Jacksonville and Atlanta. Oh, those are big cities too. That's yeah, good. so I'm gonna have to do a little tour. Hey, shit, yeah, get it together. Yeah, you know, it's like, do you think it will be hard? Do you think it's harder to like um, gain traction as an R&B? Maybe more like lean to the R&B than as a rapper? No. You think? It's I like, mean, because even though, like, like I said, even though I do R&B, I still, I'm still a rapper. Uh -huh. I'm still, ra I'm a rapper, R&B artist, like very versatile. So I mean. If anything, it helps me because I can draw from multiple markets. Yeah, yeah. I can draw from multiple markets. And once we drop the Afro beats, that's that's his, that's his own market well, right there. Yeah. Right. Afro so. beats have gained traction like in the last year and a half. The mainly I forget what's his name, the really big Afro beat artist right now. Uh, uh I mean you got Burna Boy. Burna Boy, that you got Wiz Kid, you got Davey though. I mean uh -huh. you got Rema. I mean you got Burna Boy. Uh, last year was selling out stadiums. Stadiums. That shit was crazy. Right. And I didn't. I didn't even know who he was until that. But like, that's crazy. Like, it's crazy how like the, the other genres are starting to be global now. Like, uh, it's happening with the Latino side of things too. Like Bad Bunny. You know Bad Bunny? Do I? Yeah, that man. It's Bad Bunny. Yeah, Burna Boy and Bad Bunny were on some man. crazy shit last year. Look, and then I got, man, I got some like on IG. There's this Latin artist. I forget his name. He's fired though. He's young. Yeah. As a Latin artist, I'm about to work with. Oh yeah, what's his name? I forgot. I gotta, gotta check his name. My DM's so crazy right now, but he sent me he sent me some emails. It's on my computer, but I'm a I'm a. You gonna see when we drop this music though. I Hell got. Yeah. It's so many artists though that will reach out to me and everything, and I'm trying to get that. To, so I'm getting the features together. I'm working yeah. on the project. It's a lot. And you That's know, a lot. if you could tap into, like you said, like the Afro beats, the R&B, the rap, if you tap in with the Latino side of things, man, it, you out of here. Yeah. It's like, and, I, and, I, and I speak uh, uh, Pequito Espanol. Yeah, Pequito Espanol. Yeah, I'm telling you, gay, like, and it's like, you don't even need to know what it means. Gay, right. Like, you're like a Spanish person that like uh, maybe write songs or like that knows a little bit like music. Right. And bro, have them write you like a chorus and it's, it's, it's set. You know, like, do you know who J.I. is? Of course, yeah. yeah in he, New York, he, yeah, he did a yeah. song. He did a song, "Suficiente." It's a Spanish song. Yeah, he got a little Hispanic background, but what he did is he took a Spanish uh, chorus. Yeah, and you know, but he, his bars were in English. But like that song did really good, like in the Spanish side of things, because it's like it's just it's it's yeah, Hispanic. The, we have our own artists, but it's cool when like a uh, English artist can get on there. It just draws more attention. I'm gonna tell the ladies. I'm gonna be like, "Tu tengo mi corazón." Yeah, yeah. I hey. tell you, shit like that <laughs> will will go. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like if you definitely got like the melodies and the flows for it. For sure. You know what do you think separates you from like maybe like other R&B artists? Man, is that is that right that I'm saying R&B artists? Because that's maybe like or I mean, I don't even know what to call it no more because it's like I'm a rapper, but I'm a, I'm a I sing R&B. I'm just. Melodic. Melodic. All right. We'll I'm say a melodic. Melodic. Uh -huh. melodic. I mean, but I mean, I'm a singer. I'm a rapper. But the thing about it is, I think with me, I mean, it's so much to pull from for me. I mean, uh -huh. I pull from I pull from the church. You know, I pull from um, my roots. You know, being being Ghanaian. Um, you know, just being being somebody who's been affiliated with music their whole lives. I've played instruments since I was. I mean. I played the saxophone. I've played the violin. I've played um, uh, piano. I'm not great at piano, but still, just like having a musical background, being uh -huh. trained in music, even when I didn't want to, because you know when your when your mother is a musician, you're kind of forced yeah, <laughs> into should. stuff. But it it paid off. Oh yeah, I was about to right. say that. So I mean, I just pulled from that, and then also just like um, things that I've been going through in life. Um, 
you know, they, they, there's a segment like where you have like Rod Wave and the rest of Sean they call it pain music. Mm-hmm. I think with mine though, um, with me having so much faith in God, it's like even though I'll make pain, I want you to feel the triumph as well, the triumph and the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. So I try to put all that together. Um, my spirituality and, and my faith in God is so it, it's a it's a huge part of my music because even though I have these things, I can go through anxiety. I can talk about my struggles and um, being broke, yeah, <laughs> not having nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? I can I can tell you about the lows, but then I can always tell you about the highs. Whether I've experienced the highs or whether I'm I'm still believing for the highs, I can still um, tap into that in a in a musical way. Yeah. I just feel like who else, what else do you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's fail proof to me. And it's like if you can pull that off, it's like Maybe if, like your music could associate to maybe that sort of feeling like the most. Like let's just say like a right. good example like maybe like, uh, you know, Rawway makes like emotional music, right? Or right. like X at the I don't know what to call it, but like maybe like depressed music. Right. Or you got like people like uh, I don't know. Uh, who's a good example? Maybe like I don't know. Chop. He makes turned up music, and if right. you can be like uh, maybe find your little like uh right. sentiment, right. like your main sentiment. Like it could be like right. the like you said like the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe like the triumph and or like uh the pain music and that way they like oh i'm feeling this type of way let me play some janey you know and the thing is i also like love making love music yeah i love making love music i love like to be able to be that artist to where you know somebody can say oh well this was our song Uh or this is the song you know what i'm saying stuff like that so i love making love music too there's just a lot of places for me to pull from you know and i just feel like that's what separates me oh well question let's see all right, question, question time. Let's go. Uh, my bad for my handwriting. <laughs> do you believe the moon landing was real? You believe it was real, man. You know what? I was talking about my boy. I was talking this. My boy was telling me something about this. He was like, "Bro, yeah. the moon landing fake." I was like, "Bro, ain't no way." You don't think so? I was no. At first, I said, "Ain't no way." Okay. And then I started looking, and I was like, he was like, bro, tell me why the pictures be changing and all that, and it don't look real, and did they even have color pictures back then? Yeah. And I was like, wait, hold up. He's on to something. <laughs> <laughs> he might be on the, I don't know, man. I don't know. What you think? I don't think it's real, and for a couple reasons, right? The one that the one that gave me the first biggest red flag is Neil Armstrong, the astronaut that was supposedly up there. Yeah. When they um gave him the Bible and told him to swear on the Bible that he was on the moon, he refused to. And they even said, if you do it, we'll give $5,000 to charity. Back then, $5,000 was a lot. Right. And he refused to. Like, he didn't want to. So, right. like, and then I forgot what was another reason why. Uh, I also find it weird. Why haven't we gone back since? You know? And that shit was right. back in 1969. I thought, I thought they went back uh, or you sent a drone or something. It might have, but they haven't gone back like on on um, foot since. And another thing too, um, at that time, th- they were going through like the space war, uh, space. Uh, it was called like the space war or something like that. Yeah. They were with Russia, whoever could land on the moon first, right, right, and right, stuff. right, right. And so, like you know, that Russia was on it when it was and, the Soviet Union. Or yeah, Russia? the yeah. Soviet Union, and then yeah, they and was then awesome. out of nowhere, the U.S. went to the moon. But reality, I feel like that shit was fake. Yeah, that it just doesn't make sense. So we just out here capping. Yeah, that, that, the government. <laughs> well, we be, be capping about a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. That, and it's like they can't tell us everything. Yeah. What about aliens? You think aliens are real? I feel like there's other life form. Uh huh. I mean, so I mean, I guess that's an alien. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I feel like there's definitely other life form. I don't know where they at. Shoot, but I, I definitely feel like there's something out there. I know some aliens. You know so? Yeah, my family. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, if that's the case, I do too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Shoot. Oh my god. You, yeah. you know, when you when you blow up as an artist, right? What do you see your vision as? Do you want to be an independent artist with your own label? Would you consider signing a record deal? How is that looking? I mean, whatever whatever makes the most sense. I mean, if a label comes with obviously they they got to the, it's not even about the bag. It's about the terms for me. Yeah. What are the terms of this deal? Is this is this is this the deal that's going to be able to set my family up for the next twenty, thirty, forty years, or are you just going to be eating off me? And then when you're done, I gotta regroup. Yeah. It's all about the terms. It's about it's about business. 
Yeah, and you know, I didn't start looking into that at line until like certain people started telling me or on here. Yeah. Like one thing I learned is like when the when you sign a deal and you get a hundred K, right? Yeah. But I found out that from what I, my understanding, you don't get to keep that hundred K. Like you keep it, but you gotta be able to recoup that hundred K with your uh, features, shows, and all that. So if you don't make back the hundred thousand, you gotta pay that back. It's a it can be so if you're in a three sixty, that money is a glorified loan. So it's really it's really just about the terms of it all. I mean, you got deals where you you're in a JV, the joint venture. Uh-huh. So really everything's just a split between you and the label. Uh-huh. But you got to be able to create leverage, yeah. and you got to be able to have you a hit or a consistent run of hits or a, a working business model to where they don't have to put all their resources and money into you for you to become a star. You kind of have to already have something. You know, you have to bring something to the table uh, or, or some type of monetizable business for them to be able to, okay, we can pump this up even further. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to just become um, what I need to become so I can do real business, joint ventures, yeah. stuff like that, because and I'm I'm all about that. And it, it all like, about the business. That's true. And that way, you you know what I'm saying? Not, that way they won't feed off, like, the royalties right. and stuff like that. Cause right. Is uh, the labels are the ones that really make the money out here? One person that like really like pushes for the independency is uh Russ. Yeah, Russ is smart as fuck. Russ, La Russell, I mean, really and truly, like even you even look at Young Dolph. Dolph been dead for how long now? A couple of years, I don't, or maybe a year. Yeah, I think like about a year. Now. His kids gonna eat forever. Yeah, as long as they keep everything set up the way it's been set up, his kids never gonna. They always gonna eat. We gonna we keep streaming this music. They gonna keep making money. Nipsey too. Nipsey too. Yeah. So you know, and it's like they weren't before they passed away. They weren't exactly like the face of mainstream, right? But they were still popping. And like now they're really like out there, especially now that they're. I mean, so they kept like their what is it called? Like their their masters, masters uh-huh. world. Yeah. So yeah, Jay Z was uh, is big on like the whole uh, masters and everything. Mm-hmm. That man's crazy. But this is the other side of it. This is the one thing about it too. If you're not in a situation, or if you don't have the ability to create that type of leverage for yourself or create capital or you don't have no business you don't have no merch you don't have no fan base but you're very talented masters don't mean anything like if you don't have it like you could have masters and they're not worth nothing it don't matter if you have your masters or not so it's like i said it's it's very situational it really depends on um your drive or or your your ability and and what are you going to do how you you have to have a plan you have to have a plan. So, I mean, I would tell any independent artist that if you're really trying to do this, of course, try the independent route. But everybody's not meant to go be independent and do a joint venture. Yeah. Some people need a deal because maybe they don't have a team or they don't have all those things. Everybody's not just meant to just do it all. Or, you yeah. know, everybody don't know how to engineer. Everybody don't know how to produce. Everybody don't know how to write their records. Everybody don't know how to come up with a marketing strategy and then, Pitch their like have pitch their stuff to blogs and get their stuff on playlists and yeah. I mean if I even th- it's it's a whole job and some people maybe in that case some people just want to be the music maker right and but it's like which is cool for them yeah but you're not it's like if you if you want if you want the big piece of pie then you got to do a brunt of the work and put up a brunt of the money that's just it is yeah. what it is so once you come to that realization that'll that'll change your perspective about all, the whole game. You know, you know how like all a lot, I think maybe all the major artists <coughs> Drake, Kanye, Travis, um Lil Baby, you know, their brand are just as big as them. Right. And a lot of rappers don't have a brand like uh Drake's is uh OVO, uh Cactus Jack, uh, Yeezy. Yeezy. You know, if you, when you're an artist as big as that w- do you have any ideas of what your brand and what your like your brand will be? Not you as an artist, but like what comes with you. So my label, my label is a uh, Good Life Entertainment, and um, I had a clothing line back, started it back in like 2013. It's called yeah. Good Life. Good Life. I'm bringing all that back because I'm realizing this is it's about it's about business at the end of the day. Like you can yeah. be the greatest rapper, you can be the greatest singer, you can have all the hits as an independent artist and make no money. That's true. You know, I think Snoop Dogg was just talking about he had a billion streams and he got 50,000. I saw that this morning. Nah, can't yeah. ain't doing that. So at the end of the day, for me, it's just about ownership and it's about um, a collective, you know, the music, 
um, the, the the future studio, um, the films, yeah. the, the 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 clothing, the lifestyle. You know, well, maybe uh, having my own alcohol, like you know, like do say, yeah. just the whole lifestyle. It's about a lifestyle. And can you sell that lifestyle? And do your fans resonate with your lifestyle? Can will they jump from your clothing line to buy to drinking your liquor in the club to watching your movies to wearing your clothes? Like, because if you look at Drake, I mean, true Drake fan, fans, they got OVO socks. Yeah, they listen to Drake or the knock the Nike stuff. They got the knock the Nike stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. So and you know who else does that really good? And he was I feel like he was probably ahead of his time. To this day, fifty cent. Fifty. You know, had the video game. Mm -hmm. G Unit clothing. And you, then he started becoming an investor. You know, his first big hit, Vitamin Water. He vitamin made, Water. How, right. I forgot how much he made off that. I think it was he made eighty million off of that investment when uh, Coke bought them out. Right. <clears throat> but it's crazy. It's like you know, if you weren't pursuing music, mm -hmm. what else could you see yourself doing? I'd be in business. Business. I mean, I'm regardless whether it's the music business, whatever. I mean, I'm. I'm gonna be in business. I'm. My dad was in sales, so I was. I feel like it's in my blood. It's in, you know. I feel like uh, Apple ain't fall far from the tr on the, from the tree on both sides. It just came together and you know, yeah. and it just kind of made me well balanced. But yeah, I'd be in business, some type of business. I'd be selling something, creating some type of strategy to get to this bag. Now, would you, you would prefer to like uh, sell instead of maybe like uh, running a store or like a gas station? Yeah, I'd rather sell. Uh -huh. or, um, I'm about big enterprise, man. Yeah. Everything I do, I want it to be on a large scale. That's just how I think. That's just how I move. You know, where where would be your p dream place to perform? Maybe like a certain venue or state, country? Mm, man, that's a great question. Um, Man, I think. It used to be called Staples Center, but crypto. Mm. I want to perform in Miami, LA, right? The crypto, LA. Oh, that's LA. The Lakers, the Lakers Stadium, the arena. Okay, the one Lakers Arena. I think the one in Miami is still like a. It's I, also like a crypto stadium too. I think. I don't know what it is, uh, but like the like the Lakers Arena or like a like one of the big football stadiums or something like yeah. uh or like Madison Square Garden, just somewhere iconic, Madison Square Garden. Crypto, crypto arena. Um, honestly, shoot, Dubai. Dubai. That, I've seen them Dubai performances. They look crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I always wanted to like do like Rolling Loud. Like a festival. Or, like a, I want to do the festival. Without, I'm going to be real, but I want to do it all. Uh -huh. I want to do all the big. That's why I don't really play when it comes to this music. I put... I put my all into it, and then I'm really working on, um, especially 2024, the business. It's you know when you when you have a small store, mm -hmm. and then you work on expansion. So I, I've been the independent, I've been the small independent artist, the independent artist on the come up, and now it's about expansion for me. Would you say like the mon like the financial side of things is the hardest part so far when it comes to in being independent? I mean, yeah, just because you don't have, you don't have a billion dollar label throwing money at your stuff, you really gotta um, create a budget and figure that out. But I mean, if you're focused, it's nothing to you. Yeah, you know, it's just a, it's just another task. It's like anything else in life, you gotta work. You gotta have those resources too. Yeah, you gotta have those resources. Yeah, you know, what would be like a dream artist to work with? Who like dream? The one you could really see yourself on a song with that works. Hmm. Cause you say like Megan the Stallion, I don't see. I don't know if that nah, would be. A hit. <laughs> um, mm, Drake, Raw Wave, Tory Lanez. Drake, Raw Wave, Tory Lanez. Yeah. Out of the three, I could. I think the one that will fit the most would be like a Tory Lanez. I think if you hop yeah. on with Raw Wave, it yeah. would be like, uh, like almost like two of Similar. the same style, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, with, or it could be like you on the chorus and Drake comes in with the bars. Yeah, but Drake and Tory, man, Tory, man, he locked. I'm so yeah. mad. But, I mean, I always wanted to work um, with Tory. I'm actually, as much as I'm a fan of Drake, I w I'm probably one of the biggest Tory Lanez fans. I know that's unpopular opinion, but I just got to be real. I'm I'm a huge uh, Tory fan. I, I discovered him when I was in high school. Uh -huh. So nobody was really listening to him like that. This is 
way before quarantine radio. Yeah, I'm about to ask you so about that. I was I've been rocking with dudes, so that's probably going that probably would be one of my my favorite features for real. What do you think is his best song? What was your favorite? Um, favorite Tory Lane song. Um, it's called Godfather. Godfather. Yeah, Godfather. it's old. It's old. It came out years ago. Godfather is probably one of the jumps from the Chicks tapes. Um, where he uh, sampled the um, where he sampled the Proud Family. Mm. I forgot the name of it though. But honestly, and then this la- the latest album that he dropped with the um. Was it the prom one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Alone that, at prom. Yeah, that one's a good one. It's, a, it's like a very, like, like a, it's different. It's like a classic it's kind of classic. vibe. It's classic. Yeah. It's like how The weekend. you know how they had uh, The weekend did something similar? But I like how Tori did it. It's crazy. Yeah, The weekend's one was, uh, was that the one? Um, that's not the, I forget the name of it. I forgot The weekend one, but I know Tori, the song, so the album... The album The Alone at Prom. Uh-huh. The song I really been banging to. The color violet is crazy. I mean, it's Poison Ivy. I mean, there's so many songs. But I mean and then Drake, obviously, just because that's that's like if you, you know how you they say um Lil Wayne is like the the godfather to all like the young thugs and the Lil's and everything. He is. Drake is like Drake's like the godfather to the sing rappers. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, Drake would probably be, yeah, that would be really cool for you know, me. He's like the one that kind of like really made it like, made it okay, made it paved the way. Cause like, oh, yeah. it's like Drake can hop on any song. He, any he, song. He's hopped on drill, Spanish songs, R&B, you Afro, name it. Afro, yeah. And anything. It's, uh, he even did a ooh, question time. Question time, okay. I got to grab a yellow one. I haven't grabbed a yellow one yet. Let's see. Um, if you could only listen to one song forever, what would it be? Oh! One song. I couldn't even do that. Um, That's the only one you get to listen to. It's the only song I get to listen to. Uh, dang. No guidance, Chris Brown and Drake. No, hey, that's a good hey, one. Hey, no guidance is crazy. Yeah. No guidance. That's one of my favorite songs all the time. That or um, Human Nature, Michael Jackson. Uh, I'm not sure. I know that song. That's yeah. a little bit behind my generation. Michael Jackson, crazy. Yeah. I was just watching a doc. Um, the forty the forty fortieth anniversary, anniversary uh thriller documentary. For any artist, if you wanna watch something about dedication and somebody really working on their craft, ten thousand hours, more like a million hours, watch that documentary and watch how Michael Jackson just chased perfection. Any artist, doesn't matter what genre it is, Mike's the man. You so. know, let me get your thoughts on it. Do you think they uh Michael Jackson actually killed himself or do you think it was like a hit? Man, I don't know. <laughs> It's so many theories on it. I, I hate to think about it because it kind of throw, it kind of makes me mad because I'm just like I love Michael Jackson, dog. Yeah. Like, uh, but think about it, he was he's till this day he's probably the biggest, biggest superstar, superstar ever, ever mega star. It, it would make sense why they would though, because and it's like, have you heard about that one recording about saying he's on the phone saying like there's people coming to kill him? Yeah, I've heard about that, yeah. and that kind of creeped me out. Uh-huh. It kind of creeped me out because I'm just like, dang, like. What in the world could have been going on? Because you think about it, when you're in a global level, when you can really influence the world like that, right? There's you're in you're in bed with. I'm not saying literally, but you're in bed with people that people don't even know exist, like right. higher power. Like you, you believe in Illuminati? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's crazy to think about it, but yeah. You think you think these artists that like really big artists like Drake, I Spice, you know, like people that are coming up or that have already been in the game. You think they sold their soul? Um. Do I think they sold their soul? I don't know. I don't know if selling your soul exactly means selling your literal soul. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't believe that. Either. But um, I do think that, and I don't even know if the Illuminati, Illuminati is quote unquote the Illuminati, right? But I definitely know that. Just like how I know there's a God, there's definitely um, 
evil forces that are out there and more than just music i mean just if you really pay attention to look at the government look at big pharma yeah. uh look at every industry out here and you'll see that there's somebody working against the greater good of the people in every situation so i mean how could you not think that there's like an illuminati or something you know yeah you know so. especially now like they're pushing it too like uh like the one that was really freaked me the fuck out. Do you remember when Doja Cat had on like that yeah. black? The, she had a whole red suit, but she the one where she was a black demon. Yeah, that was weird to me. That freaked me the fuck and out. And this is the thing. I think because we know that there's stuff like that out here, I feel like a lot of these artists are like doing that kind of stuff to get a reaction. Like I know yeah. like Playboy Cardi and like Doja and Lil even Uzi. Lil Nas X and Uzi, they know that that's going to get them talked about. I don't think they really know how serious the stuff really is. If they knew how serious, like, the things of the spirit and, and God and, and how your your soul needs to be cleansed and saved and all that, if they knew how serious that kind of stuff was, they wouldn't even play with it. That's true. They wouldn't even play with it. But I don't, I don't feel like people really know. So, I mean, I always encourage people Get your life right with God, because before this music, before anything, that's the most important thing to me. You know, you said earlier, you don't believe selling your soul is literally selling your soul. I don't believe either. I just think it's like you'll do anything and everything to get what you want to get. Like, I f like sketchy shit or right. like shit that are against your morals. Like, right. Um, like one thing they're pushing a lot now, like in you know entertainment mm -hmm. or like celebrities and music is like the LGBTQ side of things. It's like I have no issues against them, but right. it's like that's like one thing that they're trying to push on kids and everything. I feel like you gotta let kids be kids. Uh -huh. I don't think kids should be worrying about sexual, their being asexual or being gay or being lesbian at ten years old. <laughs> like yeah. let a ten year old be a ten year old. <laughs> like. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that type of stuff should become a factor at such a young age. I mean, by all means, you know, when people get grown and they know who they are uh -huh. and um, and they're true to themselves, I mean, be who you are, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, um, I don't, that wasn't pushed on us when we were kids. Hell no. And I don't think it should be pushed on these newer kids coming because yeah. that's not fair. Yeah. And you're kind of not letting them even realize who they really are and nowadays like social it so. was especially with the younger generation like right. it's like social media is what that's gonna be their whole life that's what gonna what they're gonna know so like, yeah whatever they push on them on the algorithms everything is what they're gonna grow up to be is like it's that's kind of like the bad thing with like you know if you had kids would you let your kids be on social media like <laughs> at a young age i don't think i don't think i want my kids to be social media crazy uh-huh but at the same time, I can't, I can't, um, I can't just shield them away from the world. Yeah. So it's about a balance. Um, that's a great question. Um, I'm gonna have to regulate now. Yeah. <laughs> Cause my parents definitely were regulating uh, what I saw and what I was doing at a certain age. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then at some point, you gotta, you gotta let your your children grow up, and you know so. You think this invention of social media was a good thing or a bad thing? I think it was great. I mean, I think it's just like anything in life with pros and cons. Yeah. I think the invention of the internet was probably one of the greatest things ever, but there's a, we're dealing with a con of it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's just like anything else. You know, that's one thing that uh, we've talked about recently is like the casino. That's one of those things that come with pros and cons. What, what were your thoughts on the casino? I wanted it. Yeah. I feel like it would have made Richmond like a, a bigger – tourist attraction place yeah when they talk about oh it's gonna bring crime there's we got crime all over the city and it's bad right now what are you talking about like yeah. this could have created opportunities and i mean it just would have did a whole lot of things but i mean uh, it is what it is you know what do you think is like the biggest lesson you've learned since you started making music man the biggest lesson i've learned since making music Mm. grow with your team grow with your team um that's why i really like what y'all are doing um i remember whew, i've wasted a lot of money trying to um shoot bigger and there's nothing wrong with that i don't want people uh -huh. to think shooting bigger is anything wrong with that but there was definitely some instances where maybe there was the, the producers i was i was working with or the engineers i was working with were just as good as maybe 
industry standard, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But because, you know, you'll go on the Instagram page and you'll say you'll see RIAA gold certified, platinum certified, worked with Lil Baby, Rod Wave, Drake, and 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 then you're thinking, oh, they're better than what you're working with. So there was times where I would I would work with other people and then I'd get the results and it wasn't even as good as what I'm getting from the people who are grinding with me every day, yeah. but because I'm thinking, oh, you know, let me work with this person because they're on or whatever. And then a lot of times you'll work with them and they won't even give you the time of day unless you're unless you're hot right now. So I learned to really uh, grow grow with your team because uh, you can't really do anything without a team, That's anything true. major. If you want to, um, there's a quote that says, like, if you want to get there fast, go along. But if you want to go farther, go together. That's and I really, true. I really do believe in that. And then also, um, Rome wasn't built overnight. That's I mean, there's too. there's times where I get so frustrated because I'm creating these records that I know are are are, are humongous records, or these records that I know are are huge statements, and I know that the everything is there, but maybe they don't have the billion streams, and yeah. maybe you know the shows that you perform at don't have the hundred thousand or fifty thousand you know people there. So sometimes you can get frustrated, but uh, my dad always tells me the process is the process, and to trust in the process, and have faith in what you're doing, and know that God's gonna come through, and He's gonna bless you. So I always have to remember to stay, to stay grounded, and to remember that. The journey is, it's the journey. Like, once you get there, you're there. Yeah. But to enjoy the journey and don't be in such a rush that you forget that, like, this is all for a bigger purpose. It's and a reality. So. If you, let's just say, right, uh, where you want to be in the music, uh, in music things, like, if you were that right now, there right. would be no joy in it. Be it's the, it's because you went through that journey that brings the joy right. of having it. Right, 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 so, right. So, right. you know, because if you were right now, it's just like this, you just became the biggest artist in the world, yeah. you'll be like, yeah, I just became it. But it's like, right. the beauty of it is like, damn, no, I did this, I did that, the situation where I was in this. It's like, that's the beauty of it. It's like. Because when you become one of the biggest podcasts in the world and I'm one of the biggest artists in the world and then we come back and we have another yeah. pod, we wouldn't have a story to talk about and nah. be like, yo, remember when we were over there? Remember when we were doing this? Yeah. It wouldn't be none of that. So I think that's maybe, to me, what I'm understanding that's the importance of the journey. So you have, you have those relationships, you have those stories, and you have that real substance to where when you're there, you're ready. Yeah. You know? And when you're talking about like working with your team, it's like that way when that moment does come, Nothing yep. changes. You you and your team. You, if anything, it's just all it does is put you in a better situation. But you right. keep doing the same thing. Right. Um. You know, like what is like the biggest piece of advice you wish you had listened to? Who? Music or 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 your, just life in your life? Oh. Or both. All right. So with music, um, I'll say. And I know this is like kind of like uh like I don't want to say corny but like it's really like everybody says this but like really stay true to you. Yeah. There was a time where I was trying to I was making music to like uh fit a certain mold or like make music that I know everybody else would like maybe like but maybe it wasn't me. Yeah. And I'm at the point where I'm unapologetically me. And and when you're unapologetically you that's when your fans are going to come because you're they're going to be able to feel the authentic the authenticity that you present and they're going to be able to to have something to hold on to yeah. and that's when you're going to have your tribe and then once you have your tribe they're going to go tell everybody else and that's how you blow up yeah. but if you're trying to constantly be something that's trending you know what I'm saying I know Jay-Z says something like do you want to be a trend or do you want to be Ralph Lauren? Yeah. Because, you know, you can be this trend over here and you can be popping for a season or you can be Ralph Lauren. I was wearing a Ralph Lauren when I was a baby and I'll go get me some Ralph Lauren now, now and uh -huh. it's still lit. Yeah. But there's be, they built that foundation. So I think be, be true to you is when it comes to music was the biggest thing um, that I would have listened to. But I'm glad I, I, found, I found that a lot of people... They never find that. And when so. you build your fan base based off you being authentic, no one can take that away from you. And they'll love you forever because yeah. you're just being you. Like one thing Drake said in one of his bars, like ten, a decade, we'll see who's around a decade from now. Right. Look where he's at a decade later. Right. Still doing, still number one. Right. Uh, when it And then when it comes to just, 
Life. Um, mm, I'll say like it's on it's on some relationship type time. Yeah. Uh, my dad, uh, my dad, will always tell me, um, just talking about the inside of a woman, not the outs, the inside of a woman, and not the outside of a woman. Just talking about is she beautiful? Is, is she is she everything she is outside to you internally? I used to not even think about that. I was. Is she, how bad is she, stuff like that, how lit she was, how she make me feel, what she can do, all that goofy stuff. And then it got to a point where I was like, man, all that, none of that means nothing. When you come home after a long day and you're dealing with somebody who is going to bicker with you, yeah. argue with you, no peace. But she's bad, though. Yeah, hey, shit. She bad, That's though. She, though. <laughs> she fired, though. It's, hey, look, it's lit. <laughs> but, nah, it's not lit. <laughs> so I mean I wish I'd have listened to that sooner but you live and you learn yeah you know have you ever been cheated on <sighs> man listen to anxiety man it's anxiety listen to anxiety man. actually you know you told me that my bad that, the question I I, 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 I should have worded it different what do you think makes a girl cheat um man I think there's a lot of reasons um I think the reason that I've I've kind of run into is like maybe if you're not giving her like a whole lot of attention, uh-huh. if you're not giving her like I know a lot of times like a lot of people who are successful and stuff like that. I have friends that you know because I play college football, so I have friends in the NFL. I have friends who are a lot bigger than me at, in the moment. Like I have a friend that has a song with Nipsey Hussle and, oh, and Chris Brown. You know, shout out my boy LaQuinn. and a lot of these um, influential or successful people one thing they'll tell me is a lot of times you'll you'll realize that you'll be messing with a girl and you're so focused on you know what you got going on that you kind of lose time for her and then she goes and finds that in somebody else but she wants to stay with you because you're the guy but you're not giving her what she needs this is the thing though that's like what it that's there's two sides of that because it's not it's a binary right. thing you could either be the busy guy that she'll always want right but because let's just say if you were the guy that got nothing going on, she don't even want you. Yeah, she will go to the busy guy. So she, it's like every, right. every, everything in life comes with sacrifice. It's it's yeah, it, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> and say so shit. I'd rather be the busy guy and you know like fucking that bitch at least fuck whatever. Right, nothing right, 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 right. So, so, so there's there's a roster shorty like wait your turn. Yeah, I got <laughs> a question for you though. All right, let's see. Oh, oh, all right. Let's see. Let's go. We'll go back to that after the question. All right, man. If you could wish for one thing, oh, um, if I could wish for one thing, I wish that, um, just that my family and friends be blessed as long as they're on this earth and that, you know, we just have successful and, um, and blessed lives, yeah. you know. I don't. I'm I'm a simple guy. I don't really need a whole lot, I, but I'm really like, I'm really family oriented. So as long as my family's blessed, my close tight knit friends are blessed, I'm gonna be blessed. Yeah. So that's really you know. Everybody saying, winning. Everybody, as long as everybody yeah. can win on my yeah. team and my team, my team works so hard, man. It's like look that that. No one really, unless you tell people, you show people, no one knows the work y'all put in behind the scenes. Nobody knows. But that work will come out the show, and then mm-hmm. everybody will be like, damn, they blew about out of nowhere. In reality, nah. Y'all, right. y'all been putting the work. No one sees the work you put in behind the scenes. No one sees the work we put in behind the scenes. Nobody sees the work behind the scenes in general. But it's like, that's where all the magic happens. Right. That's who builds you. That's what builds character, and you just got to keep going. Right. Uh, right. You know, you had a question for me. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Man, so we, me and my boy was watching this. Uh, we was watching this joint. Uh, I mean, you know Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith. Oh, is he the the? Uh, he on ESPN. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The basketball guy. He yeah. said you want to you want to get you a strong seven instead of dating a ten because the ten gonna stress you out and that strong seven is gonna be loyal. Do you believe that, true or false? What about that? I wouldn't even say a seven. What about a, a, a seven point five eight? Okay, okay. Are you taking a are you taking a seven point five eight or are you taking a ten? I'll be honest. Look, there's two sides of that, right? Right. If I want a, if I want a trophy, I'll take the ten. If I want if I want like um 
someone that I know, like, you know, no one's go, going to try to holler at her too often or I have to worry about other dudes and her DS right. too often. Shit, I'll go with the, the, the seven and a half, eight. But, like, if I want a trophy to brag, I'll get the 10. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I feel like that's like that's a status thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Shit, but I might. I think I'll do this, right? I think, like, I'll start with the 10. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, Let's see how I go. And then I'll go with the seven and a half. I'll, at least I try. You know what I'm saying? You tried to make you work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to turn it to a housewife. Yeah. Nah, shit. I feel it. I one, feel one, it. one thing I say is like, I used to be captain, save a hoe. Now I won't even pay for her toes. Oh! <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> that oh is crazy. God. That is crazy. Nah, shit. I ran into that situation a couple times. Yeah. Nah, I'm telling you, that, that's facts. I really used to be Captain Saving Hope. Man, me and you both, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Oh, it's all good, God. man. You know, um, if you had the opportunity to give the whole world a message, what would it be? Man, if I had the opportunity to tell the whole world a message, man, um, A, keep God first, man. Um, and just go for what you want in life. Go for your dreams. Don't be scared. Um, we got we only got one of these, yeah. and maximize your and maximize your time, because there's so many things you can do. There's so many things you can get done. Um, to all my young people, like really lock in and focus. I know you want to go out. I know you want to party. I know you want to turn up, but really lock in and focus. Work on your craft, and your life is gonna be great. You'll be thankful that you that you heard this message. I mean, the younger you can start, the more successful you'll be. Yeah, and it's like when you get to a point where you're really that hungry and you really mm -hmm. love it, you really want that. That's all you want. Mm -hmm. All that party and other shit won't even call. You, it won't even like get your attention anymore. And you can and you can still turn up, but just get your priorities straight. Yeah. And um, so I mean, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'll tell them. That's, that's a strong message. You know, is there something else that you want to talk about that maybe I didn't bring up? Man, um, shoot. Let me think, man. We got the EP dropping. We got the EP dropping in January. Um, right now it's January 30th, my birthday. Okay. Um, Anxiety is out on all streaming platforms. Go stream that. Video dropping soon. Um, shoot. Um, and then really, you know, my social media handles are at Jane the Official. If you're listening to this, you know, comment what you like, comment what you don't like. Tell me what you want more of, you know what I'm saying? And we can rock out. I really like, I'm really getting to the point where I'm really enjoying interacting. And I don't like to call them fans. I, I like, you know, we family. Yeah. Interacting with the fan, bam. So I'm having fun with this, man. Even though, you know, it's business at the end of the day. But, the, I mean, even if it wasn't business, I'd still be making music. So, it just makes it even more worthwhile that we can get a bag from it. Hell yeah. You know, so. You know, you coming on here is like any other artist comes on here, they gain a loyal fan from here. It's like yeah. the music hits different when I get to interact with them and yeah. like meet them. It's like shit, you know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the fun of it. So it's like you keep uh impacting people, you'll keep gaining loyal fans, uh, you know. For sure. Slowly but surely. For sure, man. I appreciate well, that. I mean, I appreciate you a lot for coming on. Um it means a lot. People take the time out of the day, come out here. Uh, so I appreciate your love for coming on. Hey man, I appreciate you. All the best. Uh, you as well. Like only up from here. Hey man, we gonna next pod. We gonna be hell yeah. Turn hell yeah. I'm, we'll get some Lit. drinks or some shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Like drink champs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate for you. Sure. I appreciate you guys a lot for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll leave the link to uh, Janie's uh, social media links right there. And we out later. Later. Oh.